Hey, welcome back to my channel. I know I never show my face, so I just wanted to pop in and say hello. Today, I'm going to go over the top watercolor supplies that I've used the most in 2019. So just keep watching. These are the supplies that I felt like I used the most when watercoloring this year in 2019. And so I'm just going to go through them one by one and let you know what it is I liked about them and why I ended up using them so much. The first is brushes. So there are two brushes here that I picked out for this year. And this year I felt like I wanted to try using a quill brush or a brush that basically just held a lot more water. And so because this is a... Um, a squirrel hairbrush then this will hold a lot more water than a synthetic and so I just wanted to try it. it came highly recommended from other watercolor artists and so I picked one up for myself and I was pleasantly surprised because it's able to still as you can see hold a very sharp point so I think you can see that it still comes down to a really sharp point even though the bristles hold a lot of water and so I actually used this purposely a lot this year because I wanted to give it a try and so um, I was pleasantly surprised and I really liked this brush and ended up um, reaching for it a lot more often than I thought I would. Another brush that I used a lot of this year is this it's kind of a no-name brand because it was a gift from a friend that she bought it off Amazon and actually comes in a pack of three and I think it's three different sizes and she took out one and gave it to me and she gave me the size 12 and for the same reason that I liked the quill brush I actually really like this one too because it has a pretty sharp point but this one's synthetic so um, it holds less water but it was perfect because I used it all of October for Inktober and I also like that it is a travel brush and I didn't obviously use it as a travel brush because I didn't travel this year but um, the ability to be able to cap it like this so the brush the, for, so the bristles are protected is great and you can travel with it and so I really liked this brush for that reason um, it's and even though it's like a no-name brand off of Amazon it still performs pretty well and so I was also really surprised and so I ended up using this brush a lot this year this is a pen that the same friend gave to me the same friend that gave me the travel brush she sent over this fountain pen and I really liked it and it came in really handy when I was doing Inktober um, and this is a platinum carbon ink pen and what is nice about it is you can unscrew it and it has ink cartridges that you can refill um, when it runs out and obviously when you're using watercolors and you're also using ink you need the ink to be waterproof and this ink is very waterproof and the pen makes really nice uh, precise marks and so I liked it a lot I used this a lot this year I used two palettes a lot this year and the first one is this 24 color palette that I put together and this was I put together later in the year and I ended up using it exclusively for Inktober so I ended up using it a lot and that's probably the month that I painted the most in 2019 and so that's why I kind of decided that this was one of my most used palettes and obviously it also includes all of the colors that I normally use you know I'm a fan of Daniel Smith paints and so um, most of these are Daniel Smith and they're tubes that I own and so I I squeezed it into this palette and made it into a 24 color palette and so this 24 color palette is one of my most used palettes this year but I actually have a second one and this is a I think it's a 36 color palette and this is a mission gold watercolor palette and I don't own the tubes of this my friend actually sent me um, all of the colors but she had squeezed them out into this palette first and then sent it to me so I was able to try all of these colors she actually made this color palette chart for me so I didn't have to swatch all the paints and that was really useful so I've used this a lot I used it for a watercolor borders project for a friend this year I'll link that video for you here so you can see it and I've also used it to paint my dog practice which I'll also link here for you so I've used this palette a lot I've used it to paint um, skies and so I just think the colors are super vibrant and I was really pleasantly surprised by the mission gold watercolor paints all right, so after paints is going to be, I would say, paper. So let's take a look. So I love Arches paper, but this year I spent a lot of time inside of sketchbooks, particularly these Pentallic Aqua Journals. And so um, I'm 
I'll just like show you the back here. Like I said, one of my biggest painting projects this year was Inktober. And so all of Inktober was done out of this Pentallic sketchbook. So I would say that the paper that I used the most this year was inside of a sketchbook. And it happened to be this sketchbook. And um, I just think this Aqua Journal actually takes watercolors very, very well. And um, you can still get a lot of really beautiful uh, watercolor effects. It's heavy enough and then you can also do ink lines on it as you can see. So this is a really great um, watercolor sketchbook and also if you're traveling with it, I love this feature. It has a brush holder. So let me just show you. So if you were traveling with a travel brush like this one, you could actually slide your brush into this holder like this and then you can have it with you and I really like this feature. With painting, there's also swatching, and I did a lot of swatching of my colors this year. And if you don't know what this is, it's my swatch stamp and a stamp pad. And the stamp pad is waterproof, because again, it needs to be waterproof if you're working with watercolors. And this stamp allows um, me to make a bunch of swatches of my colors, my paint colors, so I can have a record of them and I keep them in a binder. And so if you don't know what I'm talking about here or haven't seen it yet, I'll make sure to link that video for you about how I make these swatch cards, what the stamp does, and all of those things. So I'll link it for you. But I did a lot of swatching this year, and so um, that was one of my most used supplies. All right, last few supplies. So this one, because I did a lot of practice this year on wet on wet painting, I actually ended up using a lot of artist masking tape. I used to not use it because I didn't paint very wet and so I wouldn't need to necessarily tape down my paper. Since I was using loose sheets of paper, um, and I was painting very wet. I would use this to tape down all the borders of the paper and then once the painting was dry I could peel this off and I'd have a nice clean border and it would also help me keep my papers flat while I was painting. And so this one just happens to be from Blick Arts and um, I just think it works pretty well because it ne has never ripped my paper so far. You can also use blue painter's tape but I just like that it's white and it doesn't distract me when I'm painting. I also have used this water cup so much and I used to use like uh, plastic takeout containers like or a plastic um, old gelato Talenti gelato container for my water cup but um, my friend she gifted this to me just recently actually and I wanted to include it because obviously I use it every time I paint and it's just a beautiful piece of ceramic pottery I guess you would call it pottery I just I love it because it has a brush holder right so you can set your Set your brush on it like this and I'll tip this over so hopefully the water doesn't spill out. So it has two little grooves for your brushes. So I have a place to rest my brush and then um, it's just a nice size. It's a good size. And so I really love this, this cup. And um, I would show you the bottom of it. Actually, hold on one second. I'll show you the bottom of it. I just have to dump out the water. And so if I show you the bottom of it, it's made by Sylvan Clayworks. And um, I will link this in the description below too so you can see where you can get this. But it's lovely and very handmade. And the last thing is this board. So this board I've used every single time I paint. And I, I didn't have a board like this before, but I found it very useful again this year um, as I was painting really wet because you can see that if you paint wet and you tape down your paper, you're going to get paint all over the surface of um, your desk. And so I use this to kind of keep everything on one board. And um, I would tape down my paper and then I would paint on this board and then I would take it off. There's another thing I use this board for. And, and I use it to flatten any painting. So if I'm done with a painting and it's warped, I'll just pull it up and then throw the, the painting underneath upside down. And then I'll spray it down with water and then I put the board back on top and I lay some heavy books on top and then it just flattens out my watercolor painting when I'm done. All right, so those are all of the supplies that I used the most in 2019. I hope that it was fun to see my supply roundup from this year and that this was helpful. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit subscribe on my YouTube channel and hit like on this video so that I know you liked it and then I can create more just like this. Thanks for watching.